Hello, my dear students. Uh, well, today we'll try to wind up the lesson which we have already started uh, yesterday. So, in continuation of our topic about the disintegration and the end of bipolarity, we also have another new topic called uh, non-alignment movement. Now, non-alignment movement means, uh, or in short, we call it NAM. This non-alignment, the word non-alignment means not to align with anyone, not to join any, uh, any any group, or not to be a part of anyone. The word itself, it's clear like like the word itself is clear by meaning of a non-alignment. So by that, I think you'll be getting an idea what non-alignment means. So. In order to know this non-alignment, we need to know a little a bit of history about it. So let's see. Uh, this non-alignment was founded in 1961. And then, the founder, founders of this non-alignment movement were these uh, great personalities from different countries, especially from Asia and Africa. Now Sukarno, a former president of Indonesia, Joseph Broz Tito, former president of Yugoslavia, Jawaharlal Nehru, a former president of India, Gamal Abdel Nasser, former president of Egypt, Kwame Nkrumah, former president of Ghana. Now these were the people who founded this non-alignment movement. Now, uh, actually this was a uh, this idea was propounded by Jawaharlal Nehru, our former our leader of India. Now this non-alignment, why? Uh, and then, okay, its headquarters is situated in Indonesia, that is central Jakarta in, in Indonesia. So, why this NAM was formed? Or why this was created? What was the reason in behind creating this uh, non-alignment movement? Now, it it was created during the period of Cold War. So, in order to stay away from the Cold War confrontation, these countries they come together uh, and then they form this non-alignment movement as a group of country. They don't want to join either part of the superpower blocks that is USSR and then USA so they don't want to be a part of this war, Cold War confrontation that was the first reason the second reason is to help the newly independent state to remain sovereign in terms of territory economic and security from big war powers now these uh, countries who have formed this NAM they were newly independent uh, from the colonial power like a uh, British or Western powers like uh, many other countries who were controlling the Asian countries and the Afri African countries. So when they have newly found their independent and then if they again join this Cold War confrontation, definitely they are, they are going to be controlled by one or the other superpower which they are going to join either by USA or USSR. So, this NAM, they come together so that they can help each other to build their own countries economically and security and then even for the sovereignty of their territory. So, this NAM was created in order to give uh, security for the people of this country, newly dependent country, economically and even in the territory so that they, they did not fall another time again into the hands of the big power, world powers. The third one is they wanted to fight against this colonialism and neo-colonialism. Now colonialism, uh, as we all know about what is meant by colonialism, uh, we'll not go into that, but uh, neo-colonialism means uh, uh, controlling the other country new newly in newly uh, new ideas new means new so new idea in a sense like in an economic way through this MNCs and all we'll come to that uh, in a later part but uh, 
this norm was created in order to fight against this colonialism and then neocolonialism and then even this uh, mm, racial racial discriminations to fight against all those things and then to maintain peace the another reason for the creation of NAM was to maintain peace in the world now this like I've mentioned to you this NAM was created mainly by afro asian nations who were colonized by the British Empire and the other Western powers so that is the little big uh, historical background about the creation of this non-alignment movement now the relevance of NAM or is it still relevant for our people or the country I mean or the world is it still functioning can we still count on NAM or their functions or their objectives because we all know the NAM was now just now I've told you NAM was created just for Cold War situation okay now to give our ar argument about the relevance of NAM first the first point is to sustain the identity of the small countries now uh, these small countries are through the help of NAM they are trying to maintain their security maintain their sovereignty maintain their freedom of decision now small smaller countries are very uh, uh, easy prey for the bigger country or the developed country so they try to develop I mean they try to bring some changes into the small country and then they will try to control the government in the small countries through their uh, big corporations like the MNCs and then when the freedom of decision is lost then the country identity is being lost so NAM they try to help the small country to sustain their identity by helping them to secure the freedom of decision not to fall into the hands of the big or the developed countries the second point is to fight against the neocolonialism in the shape of MNCs and economic dominance now MNCs means multinational companies these companies they try to set up a big big or huge companies in the developing countries and through these things they try to uh, help out the government through financially and then slowly they will try to influence even the decision making of the government of these small countries so NAM is really fighting against this new colonialism that is prevailing in this present time so with this second point we can give a strong argument that NAM is still relevant in the present time the third is to do away with the terrorism okay now at this present time terrorism is becoming a global issue so NAM is trying uh, this NAM is trying to do away with the terrorism and then terrorism uh, it doesn't know any boundaries it doesn't know any territory it is uh, an enemy of the world together so this NAM is trying to help the world to do away with the terrorism so that is another good point to give an argument about the relevance of NAM even at the present time though there is no more Cold War or there is no more colonialism or there is no more uh, racial discriminations that is happening or maybe not uh, openly so by doing away with the terrorism or helping to do away with the terrorism we can give a strong argument about the relevance of NAM the fourth point is the shift from political to economic matter after the Cold War. Now, since uh, political issue, the co political confrontation between the two superpowers is no more, NAM they try to now emphasize, focus on the economic matter. Now, new international economic order. This uh, international monetary funds or the World Bank or the 
world trade organizations all these are being controlled by the well developed countries and then the developing countries they have a less voice in in all these things so here the nam country uh, they are trying to ask the developed country to make it more democratized so that everyone has a equal share to say or to give voice out their needs or voice out their opinion even in the economic matters or uh, the international monetary funds of the world now the newly developed country they even want to participate in, in the economic affairs of the country it should not be only controlled by the developed country but even the developing country should be given equal opportunity to participate uh, in the decision making and everything about this uh, economic matter in the world now the question of reshaping the UNSC UNSC here we're talking about the United Nations Security Council now so far since from the creation of uh, the United Nations there's only five permanent members till today so the NAM is asking the world to make it more democratically representative body they are asking the world the big powers to admit more countries into the united nations uh, national national security council so that it will be demo it will be a democratic representative body but still it's not happening and so because of that we can give a strong argument that nam is still relevant in trying to bring these kind of changes into the world because since united nation is a forum for the whole world it cannot be controlled by some few uh, developed countries so nam is fighting for reshaping of the united nations security council to be to make it more democratically representative body in the world so that is another good argument about the relevance of nam okay uh, fighting against the talibans in afghanistan and isis uh, who are giving trouble in the iraq and the arabian countries arab countries uh, nam is trying to fight against this group of uh, anti-social group or elements so even with this point we can give a strong argument that uh, nam is still relevant because it's this taliban and isis is still in existence it's not it's not a uh, it haven't vanished yet uh, and then they are giving the problem to the world still so this is another good point where we can argue that uh, since NAM is fighting against this Taliban and ISIS and the terrorism and all these things with all this point we can give a good argument about the relevance of NAM so there's, those are the six points now we will try to talk about the ineffectiveness of NAM why NAM is not being so effective in the world the main reason is there is no good relation between the member countries especially like uh, Pakistan and India they are always uh, like a uh, Tom and Jerry so to say uh, they are always keep on fighting I mean like the cat and the dogs they they don't have a uh, good relationship since from the independence of the both of the countries one of these countries and then also there is a war between Tanzania and Uganda so these members they are not uh, having a healthy relationship with one another so because of this reason this is the main reason there is no co cohesion among these members so it cannot function properly or effectively in the world so that is the ineffectiveness uh, that is the reason for ineffectiveness of NAM in this present war now let's see some arguments given by some writers about the re irrelevance of NAM. Some people or the, some scholars they give an argument since this NAM was created uh, during the Cold War it is no more relevant since it was created during this uh, period where there was a racial discrimination like apartheid 
and also it is no more in existence or it's no more there in practice or this num is no more relevant in this present world end of cold war cold war is no more so num is no more that is one of the good reason they have uh, given a argument about the irrelevance of num the second point is disintegration of soviet union now since uh, they did not want to join either of the superpower but at this present time since soviet union is no more there is only one power so they are default by default they are under the control of USA or one power the superpower so why there should be uh, existence of NAM that was the question because Soviet Union had already disintegrated the third one is the end of colonization like I've told you there is no more colonized uh, nation in the world now in existence so the scholars who are giving the argument is there is no more colonization there is an end of colonization so this num is no more they, are, they have no more objective to fight against this colonization so it is no more relevant the another reason is racial discrimination is getting over or it's already over in the world so num has nothing to fight against for since there is no racial discrimination the last point is growing of peaceful coexistence and economic cooperation now this peaceful coexistence and economic cooperation is happening around the world the world is trying to come together as one to fight a global pandemic situations or things which is uh, currently in existence among us uh, that is a good example the countries the world they are trying to coexist peacefully uh, and give economic cooperation among one another so that is one good reason why the scholars some of the scholars they were talking about the irrelevance of NAM NAM was fighting for peaceful coexistence and economic cooperation among the countries or the world and that is happening so NAM is no more uh, needed in this in this uh, present modern world so that was one of the good reason uh, argument given up by the scholar some of the scholars so that is the end of the chapter for chapter 10. I hope you have understood the lesson. Through this uh, small explanation we'll, we are trying to give to you. So thank you and we'll see you in the next class.